Let's take a look at how molecular compounds are related to molecular structure or shape of molecules. First, we need to look at the octet rule. The octet rule states that we want to have complete eight electrons in a valence. So this is very similar to our ionic compounds where it wants to be like a noble gas. Except remember, in molecular compound, we typically are sharing electrons. Now, the octet rule applies whether you're sharing or transferring electrons, but we're going to look specifically at molecular compounds. We're going to focus on sharing. What you want to do is you want to share or transfer electrons to reach eight electrons. The shared electrons are going to count for both atoms sharing. The exception to the octet rule that we're going to look at is hydrogen. So hydrogen, it only needs two electrons. Everything else we're going to be looking at is going to need eight. So this is the structure that the, the steps that we're going to go through for finding the Lewis structure for a molecular compound. We want to find the Lewis structure so we can understand how the molecule is shaped, and that will help us to understand how a molecule works and what things it can and can't do. This is going to be extremely important for anyone who needs to take physiology. If you ever want to take a look at the medications that you are taking, there's a lot of different applications for this. First, we're going to look at the arrangement of the atoms. Then we need to find the number of valence electrons. We're going to attach all of the atoms to the central atom. And then we're going to complete octets and create additional bonds needed. I'll go through each of these steps uh, as, as we go through here. So I'm going to start with PBr3. So PBr3, we have phosphorus and we have three bromines. If we look on the pyrrhic table, phosphorus is in group 5a, so it has five valence electrons. Phosphorus, there's only one of them in PBr3, so five times one gives us five total electrons from phosphorus. For bromine, it's in group 7a, so it has seven valence electrons. There's three of them in this formula. Seven times three, 21. So we have five valence electrons from phosphorus and 21 from bromine. I put my phosphorus in the middle and the bromines around it. Generally, you can assume that the, the atom you only have one of is your center atom. Um, but we can also we'll also um, label that in any assignments that where it might be unclear. So I've put my phosphorus in the middle, bromine all around. Phosphorus is going to be attached to each bromine. So I'm going to create a bond, and I'm going to create a bond by just creating a line between the phosphorus and the bromine. Notice I've put a dot at each end of the line. This is just to remind me that this line is actually two shared electrons. So this line is just two electrons that are attaching these two. It's just a shorthand we use. So I'm going to attach the phosphorus to each of the bromines. Because to be molecularly bound, you have to have this bond. Now, I'm going to satisfy the octet. So what that's going to mean is I'm going to look at each individual atom and figure out how many more electrons it needs to get to a full octet. So phosphorus here in the middle, each of these electrons is going to count for both the phosphorus and the bromine. So phosphorus here is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons so far. It needs eight, so I'm going to add two more. We always add electrons in pairs. For the bromine, I have one, two, so I'm going to need three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of the bromines here is the same. Now 
Now, the last thing I do is I double check it and make sure that I have 26 total electrons, 21 plus 5, 26. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26 electrons. So this structure is satisfied by having single bonds. Let's take a look at the next example. CH4, we have carbon, and we have four hydrogens. Carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, but there's four of them. So we have four. So that gives us four plus four. So I have eight valence electrons I need to have in my final structure. I'm going to attach each atom to the central atom. And I check my octets. Carbon here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of the hydrogens, remember, hydrogen only needs two. It's got one, two. That's good. One, two, one, two, one, two. So every the octets are satisfied, and we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Let's take a look at the CO2 example. I've got my carbon, I've got two oxygens. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six, there's two. So I have 12 from my oxygens, four from my carbons. I need to have 16 in my final structure. So I'm going to go through the same steps. Attach my carbon to my oxygen. Carbon here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oxygen, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fill all the octets, and then always double check. Do I have 16, exactly 16 electrons? No more, no less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have too many electrons in this structure. So the way that we solve this is if we can't do it with single bonds, we're going to replace one of these single bonds with a double bond. And I do one of these bonds at a time. Don't change every single bond, just change one single bond to a double bond. Now we double check our octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Too many electrons on carbon. So I'm going to remove one of these lone pairs of electrons. Oxygen, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Too many electrons here, too. We count our electrons again, and I find that there's 18. Better, but it's still too many. So I'm going to need to add another One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These low, this lone pair is too much, so I'm going to erase it. Same thing here. We've got ten here. We need to erase a lone pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So this is the correct structure for carbon dioxide, because we have every atom has a proper octet, exactly eight electrons, and the total structure only has 16 electrons. You must satisfy both. Finally, let's take a look at H2O, good old water. H1, so there's two of it. We have two valence electrons from hydrogen. Oxygen, six. So our total here is going to be eight. We have oxygen is the, the one we have only one of, so it's going to be our central atom. I'm going to create a bond. Now let's check our octets. Hydrogen only needs two electrons. One, two, get satisfied. 
one, two, it's satisfied. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, I need five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have the correct structure for oxygen. You may have written it this way, or you might read, write it this way. Either way would be correct, and we'll talk a little bit about which one you would choose when we start looking at molecular shape.